play. There's the magic finger. Pressing down. Yeah. The Wrestling Club with Darren and Brett. We've got a show that you'll never forget. Forget, forget. Greetings, Grapple fans, and welcome to WFMU's Wrestling Club, the only space that's safe for all wrestling fans, whether you're casual, loud, obsessed, or ashamed. I'm Darren Maybe, broadcasting from the belly of the beast here in Jersey City, New Jersey, where tonight we have a terrific episode of Wrestling Club planned for you. If you want to join the club tonight, you can give us a call on the hotline at 732-200-CLUB. You can also text us at that number or... You can chime in on the chat on YouTube where we are live right now, but let's just jump into it. I got to introduce you to my tag team partner from Hollywood, California, coming to us via satellite, the Dave to my Earl, Brett Davis. Is that a Blue Bloods? No, that's that's a Hebner, baby. That's the Hebner. Oh, place. oh my goodness! I forgot you're a little we're, more, we're talking I, Brett, of the stripes here. <laughs> I'd say you're. A I'm not more, wrong though. I, I, you know what? I gave you the Dave, but you might be more of an Earl. I don't know. It's hard to say. We're both just I, trying to sell t-shirts. I think I'm more. Through. I think I'm more of a Dave Taylor than an Earl Robert Eaton to you. But uh, uh, yeah, I may, I may be more of a. I don't know. I think we're both a little Earl. <laughs> yeah, we both have our we both have our Earl moments, but that's all right. That's all right. We follow the rules. Yeah. Well, uh, you know, we're talking about the Brotherhood of the Stripes this week because we have a very special guest, uh, a universally beloved individual. Universally <laughs> beloved. <laughs> very special. <laughs> I, I, you have come up so many times on this show, oh, and no. it is always glowing praise. The uh, ultimate wrestling he is good a, guy. I've bribed a lot yeah. of people. A lot, Dude, a lot you of people. Can't a lot of people say that you're a referee. <laughs> oh, you're right. I mean, that actually, you, you know why the Hebners got fired from WWE, right? That's true. Yeah, they Re- were, wrestling were, referees are not necessarily. <laughs> they were selling. Their, they were. They were. They were bootlegging merch. Apparently, uh, allegedly, I wasn't there, but that's what I hear. <laughs> Yeah, if you you could plug your Kenny Omega shirts at the end of the show. <laughs> uh, <laughs> he I'm back, I'm is back a referee. Show. Yeah, he's a referee for all elite wrestling, uh, and you know, uh, an independent uh, legend, Bryce yeah. Remsburg. Welcome Ugh. to the show. Ugh. Ugh. Thanks for having me. Thanks for allowing me to bridge the gap uh, between Los Angeles, California, Jersey City, New Jersey, right here in beautiful scenic. Amish paradise of Lancaster, Pennsylvania. Having a, having a lovely chat on a Thursday. What's wrong, Darren? No, I think somebody, I think we're connected. I think we have like a phantom call going on in here or something. Is anybody, any of you guys is, got is the something hotline open? On? Is the hotline open? I, you know, I don't think the hotline's open. Let me just take a look. No, it doesn't look like the hotline's open. But does anybody but have you a... can call into the hotline, 732-200-CLUB. Did you buy that? Did you buy that phone number? I have so many questions about. Or did you just keep, keep <laughs> yeah. applying for ones that randomly ended up with club? No, I, uh, you know, I went. I spent a, a good seven hours going through all the available New Jersey-based Skype vanity lines to get two five eight two to get club at the end of it. Wow, uh, that's uh, great. So well, yeah, no, it's it's you know it's pretty good. So you can give it a call. You know, I pay six dollars and fifty cents a month for it. So let's uh, make it worthwhile wrestling. I thought you're gonna members. say a year. I thought you're gonna say a year. That's a no, solid twenty cents no. a day. Don't worry, I'm I'm writing it off. You no, know, at the end of the year, <laughs> we're gonna you know me and Uncle Joe. He's taking care of me this year. I'm not gonna <laughs> so seven three two two hundred club. You can also text that number. I found out. So please. Uh, you know, if you got any questions for Bryce, you have any uh, thoughts or concerns for me or Brett, you know, that's the place to go. I, I just got your tweet. I'm gonna tell. I'm gonna tell everybody about it. Let's 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 make it active here. Let's get it going. Yeah, now the floodgates are gonna open. So oh, let me Bryce, tell you what. just that what I say they do. It's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> just last night, you were refereeing a uh, a, a very dramatic bout uh, between so, Orange Cassidy and Penta. Uh, when you say Orange Cassidy, I think dramatic. Yeah. I would like the record to state I was an Orange Cassidy early adopter. Uh, Orange Cassidy was a, I of a, shared a car, uh, just myself and Orange Cassidy, just the two of us, drive, drove up to uh, Rochester, New York from Philadelphia in about 2008 when no one knew who Orange Cassidy was. And 
Uh, he was, you know, trying to get on shows. So uh, I take no credit for all of his success, uh, but I would like the world to know that I, uh, I was, I was, I was on the. I have a really good seat on the bandwagon. Yes, guys, Absolutely. we got to figure out what's going on with this audio because this, <laughs> I can't hear you guys on my recording right now on my side. This is a, you know, this is WFMU related. So this is DIY. This is punk rock. Listen to supported mm -hmm. free form, you know the deal, which means, uh, you know, sometimes it's held together with pixie sticks and bubble gum, uh, which is yeah, a very yeah. nice thing. But uh, I did hear something about punctured armor. I feel like maybe there's like a <laughs> like some sort of game happening. Some yeah, interference I feel like with we're, a game. I feel like we're getting it. We're in we're in somebody's chat, which you know, maybe if they want to join, you know, yeah, I'll, I'll talk merge. I'll talk games. Uh, so we're just gonna maybe just take a little. I think it's okay right now, but we'll we'll keep an ear out for it. Don't worry, we're gonna fix this in the edit. You know, if you're on YouTube right now, you're getting the real experience. You know, you're getting uncensored, unfiltered, unadulterated yeah. content. But you know, if you're listening about YouTube, in the future, you get what you pay for. That's right. That's right. We can six, six, between you and two, you don't see that. Six, and remember, it's six dollars a month. Six dollars a week. No, six dollars a month to put this show on. So we gotta, we gotta get every penny's worth. That's right. That's right. It seems you like know, it's usually, better now. Usually, we open up this show with a, a discussion about uh, wrestling news, but but Raw's there, been. In, I, yeah, I was about to say Raw's been in repeats for a month, so I'm not really sure what's going on there. <laughs> yeah, uh, the only so. news we're talking about would maybe disobey the bylaws of the Brotherhood of the Stripes, <laughs> so oh, we'll sorry. avoid that. So, we'll avoid that <laughs> altogether. Is someone, is someone cheating again? Don't tell me someone's cheating again. Well, I think someone's got a, an <laughs> alternate, an alternate view of the uh, rules. You know, I think they might have gone their own way and things a little bit. You know, maybe uh, oh. you. Know, so I, you know, I, I think will lay those... awake at night and worry that I am not doing all I can to keep the the fullest amount of justice and you know Good. as it should be in the in the in the beloved universally beloved uh, world straight down the middle of professional wrestling. That's I, important. There, you know, there was a there was a microphone involved last night. I watched on the replay on television. I missed something. I had to uh I had to give myself ten lashes. I, it's a punishment. I I, well, I, hey. <laughs> I support that. I support that. Yeah. Uh, I try my hardest. All, all I can do is my best guys. No, you I, did good. I want to get in I wanted to get into your background because usually ask people when what their first exposure to wrestling was, but I gotta know, like, were you a hall monitor in school, or were you like constantly breaking up fights, like uh, under the bleachers? No, I, I was uh, um, a part-time referee for my uh, separated parents, and but but that that cuts a little deep. Sorry, guys, I got, I got real. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but but moreover, I was a hopelessly unathletic wrestling fan. So if you love wrestling, Us but you too. realize you're never going to wrestle, what is the thing that you can do that get, that lets you go to wrestling for free? <laughs> and eventually someone pays you to go to wrestling. Uh, that's be a referee. So, you know, I started while I was still training at the Jakar Wrestle Factory in Allentown, Pennsylvania in 2002 as a ring announcer. And then after four months that I was refereeing and I realized that I get to, you know, be a part of the show, uh, which was important to my young performer brain. Uh, I get to go to all the places and, and, and travel eventually. And, you know, I'm not a fan. I'm in the ring. I don't just have to sit and ring the bell. Like I get to be part of the action in a way, uh, but not, this was also when right after ECW closed and I was, you know, a very astute reader of magazines and newsletters and all that good stuff in 2001. And I read some article or Tommy Dreamer couldn't walk up a flight of stairs and the Sandman couldn't remember his kids' names. And I was like, oh, maybe I, maybe wrestling's not for me. <laughs> uh, and so refereeing is how I fell into it. And once I started refereeing, I started doing other stuff behind the scenes, uh, traveling stuff, helping commentate, whatever, like, I always kind of live by the credo that the more hats you wear, the harder it is to get rid of you, which is true in comedy as well. If you can, you know, help mix the board or you have, yeah. you can bring the stuff or you can drive the guys to the venue. Like you are now worth more than you were five minutes ago. So I took that with me. I'll, I'll drive the guys to the show. I'll, you know, print out the map quest directions in 2004 or what, you know, whatever it could be to make me more harder to get rid of. And, it took 17 years, but uh, in 2019, I got to quit my job and say, I'm going to join the circus. And I'm going to, I'm, I'm sorry, 
respected advertising agency, I cannot do this anymore for your pharmaceuticals. I must go count loudly on television. And they were like, okay, okay, okay. And uh, luckily for me, so far, so good. I'm sure I'll be, as, as, I, as I said on my last day there, I'm sure I'll come groveling back for a job one day. Hopefully it's not tomorrow. And that was two years ago, knock on wood. But yes, wow. I'm, I'm, I'm living a dream that I could not have dreamt because it did not exist three years ago, which is incredible. weird and crazy. It's yeah, crazy. it's incredible. Yeah. I'm very, very fortunate. I, I uh, very, um, it is no, no disrespect to anyone there, but I had very little desire to go referee for WWE or NXT because it involved moving my family to Florida, which was not an enticing uh, attraction to me. And it did not seem like I would be very happy there personally. Uh, so that was just kind of never something I super pursued. And then, you know, an all elite star fell from the sky and here I am. Sorry, well, that was not the question. I, was say, I feel like, I feel like there's some changing of the game that's glossed over here because, you know, I, you know, I watch wrestling for years I'm and so I've, <laughs> I, see, I, we do it up. to ourselves. Yeah, yeah, it's true. Um, but you know, I, I rarely have noticed the referee, uh, the referee's role, um, which I think is the point. I think it's like, yeah, you're supposed to move the thing along. You're supposed to be like the, the secret ingredient to making a match flow. However, I feel like I've, no I've noticed you for all the right reasons. And there's so. <laughs> no more proof positive than White Eagle Hall, Jersey City. Um, a, a dream match, frankly. <laughs> Brother uh, versus former, brother. Brother versus yeah. brother. <laughs> a former wrestling club guest called it one of the greatest. Uh, sorry, DJ Accent Report, Eric Shore. He called it one of the greatest oh, yeah. performance art pieces ever witnessed. Uh, you refereed Invisible Man versus yeah. Invisible Stan. Um, tell me, what was the feeling like backstage? Uh, well, I just, you know, was I, there tension to I get wanna, it out I, in the ring? I want to briefly detour and say that I was fortunate enough to be invited to give a talk at Cody Rhodes and uh, wrestling school in Georgia a couple of months ago. And I went and, and someone uh, was like, you know, was trying to hype me up and said, this is the guy that refereed Invisible Man versus Invisible Stan. And one dude in the crowd was like, hell yeah. And then <laughs> Cody Rhodes was like, what are you talking about? And I was like, oh no. Uh, <laughs> oh no. <laughs> Advertising here I come. Let's talk about something else. <laughs> uh, he's like, tell me more about this match. I was like, oh, let's, let's, let's talk about something else, guys. Uh, yes, I, when Eric Shorey calls that performance art, uh, that is like, you know, I love professional wrestling and I'm proud of everything I've done in professional wrestling. But if something that I was a part of is like transcends wrestling or, you know, becomes out of the wrestling hemisphere, like that's the greatest thing in the world to me. Uh, um, that's very kind of him to say. I, uh, uh, it's very accurate of him to say because it's... it's you could say Kota Ibushi can have a, a match with a, you know, a blow up doll or whatever. Yeah. You know, so and so can wrestle a broom. but There's <laughs> the, none of that going on. The true stars in, you know, that night were your neighbors in Jersey City, Darren, or the mm -hmm. like. That's if, right. If, we're if, if, a wild bunch. It's it, it truly, though, if the crowd was not into that, that would have been the longest 10 minutes of my life. <laughs> right. Yeah. Like you got them the into it, though. Like I mean, Janela and GCW primed them to be into it. Uh, it was a it was a team effort. They you know created a storyline that people were invested in, and they built it to a boiling point, and it, it culminated WrestleMania weekend at Spring Break. But if the crowd was you know not if the crowd was apathetic or not into the idea of two invisible wrestlers fighting, it was gonna it would not have taken ten minutes. It would have taken about two minutes, and you know. The red light would have been flashing in the back for me and I would have gotten the hell out of there. But it was it it was it was the most uh you know AEW is amazing and professionally fulfilling. It is ten, a hundred, a thousand times over for me. But personally fulfilling, that's the coolest thing I've ever done or been a part of. And uh because usually I'm um the 
at best, number three ranked most important visible person in a, in a ring. And right. that night I was the, num- by default, I was the number one most important visible person in the ring. Uh, so I realized it, you know, it was on me and I was even worried some of the stuff I wanted to do was really, re- and in fairness, uh, Brett Lauderdale and Joey Janela who run, and, and Giancarlo was part of the Brain Pr- Trust in those days. They were like, they asked me a couple weeks ahead if I wanted to do it. And I was like, yeah, that sounds like a challenge. I want to do this weird thing that you want to do. And then I thought about it. I was like, oh, this is really difficult. And I was like trying to run ideas by them. And it was a very hectic, busy show day. And they're like, we're sure whatever you want to do is fine. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> yeah, I've been there. Yeah. I've been Go there. And then fine. I have. You have eight I, minutes. I've Go been down. there. And then I, t- I told uh, X-Pac he had no balls. <laughs> that I, that I had a talking to. And on the Chris Gethard show, so I know what that feeling is like. Um, you know, I, ju- I just got to point out that it's an all-star chat right now. Um, Noli can't stay up for the whole show, oh, but man. wanted to say oh, hi. Noli. Hi Noli. Hi Noli. I gave Noli a, a love. I gave Noli a world class high five in the Logan Square Auditorium in Chicago, Illinois once. I hope it meant as much to him as it means to me. Respect. Wow. Respect. I, I hope so too. Yeah, that's a future. That's a future AW champion. I hope so. Um, I can't wait. But yeah, yeah. I mean, what is Invisible Man or Invisible Stan like? You know, they're Janela guys. They at least like can get a bone thrown, like maybe appear on dark or something, right? Outlaw mud show guys, we can't have the that's the, that's that that's bush league. We can't have no, I don't know. That I'd love that. I would love that. I would love that very much. I think I I, I think that um, this is a crazy sentence I'm about to say, but I think Orange Casty may have opened some doors to what um, uh, Turner Network Television executives. Uh, comprehend as professional wrestling and mm-hmm. what prime time professional wrestling fans uh, comprehend as professional wrestling because there were people within AEW that were like, I don't get it. I don't get it. I don't get it. And then slowly, but surely they saw what was going on and they realized, Oh, he can wrestle too. Uh, uh, like, I think he, I don't think it's tomorrow, uh, but <laughs> I think there, there may be a day where you see that, what what Orange Cassidy does, which is performance art in its own right, I feel comfortable saying, uh, mm-hmm. is maybe a step one of what we could possibly, hopefully, maybe see uh, another day. But there were very important people at AEW who couldn't understand why he was there and now can't wait to wrestle him. Um, Chris Jericho built his whole summer around. Chris Jericho doesn't wrestle people he doesn't want to wrestle. He doesn't have to. He's been at this for 30 years. He wanted to wrestle Orange Cassidy multiple times over an entire summer because he he gets it. He understands it. He realizes that this is a cool thing. Uh, and the the um, I've told this story before, but I'm not ashamed to admit it again. Like as a fan of Orange Cassidy and a personal friend of his for over a decade, um, this was too. Also, in hindsight, this is even more powerful. Less than two weeks before the pandemic started, we were in Chicago doing an AEW pay-per-view uh, called Revolution. It was 10,000 people in an arena. It was crazy. And Orange Cassidy wrestled Pack. And this was kind of the first, like, all of, we were, like, dropping hints, but this was all kind of being built to the point that, like, Orange Cassidy can go. He can wrestle. But no, like, you know, 3% of the AEW audience knew that. And on that night, the other 97% learned that he could go and hang with Pac and it was like he was for 10 minutes he was the most over guy in the world like cr- a standing mm-hmm. ovation crowd chanting his name and, and I had goosebumps and I was refereeing match I was in the ring and I got to the back and like this is just a weird emotional dump thing I just started crying like it was such a powerful emotional thing I was like this weird stupid off to the side <laughs> thing that I believe in for so long just captivated a pay-per-view an arena of 10,000 people and I was just like this is amazing so um, I hope that Jim step- Ross calling it. And Tony <laughs> Shavani, it's- I will say Shivani has turned the corner. He gets it. I don't know if we got Jr. yet, but maybe one day. Uh, yeah. We got we got two out of three. Excalibur and Shivani are on board. Uh, <laughs> it's funny. My just want a little aside. My roommates, whenever I watch AEW, they always refer to Tony Shivani as the manager of Quick Check. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I just really what they see. I love Tony, but you know, he's a re- <laughs> but Tony represents the common man, the regular guy. And that's who Orange Cassidy, I've seen it. 
like non fans or like yeah. extremely casual fans, they see Orange Cassidy and they yeah. love it. They I get it. Not, not, not to works. go back to Invisible Man, but I've gotten a lot of that too. It's like I, sh- my, 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 my roommates, my brother, my friends, they're not wrestling fans, and I showed them this and they loved it. And like, oh, like that's that's the best. Like when right. Chikara was was firing all cylinders, Chikara was at its peak. It was it was wrestling for the non wrestling fan. Like that's the highest compliment you could give us. Like right. my 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 roommate hates wrestling. I brought her to the show. She had a great time. Like those arena shows in South Bend that Chikara doing were like 2010, 11, 12. Like that was the jam. Like that that was that was that was the peak. So I understand what you're saying. That's, that's I will uh, I at next time I, if I ever go to a quick check again I will think of Tony Schiavone. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's the thing. Like you, you mentioned those Chikara years, and it's like Invisible Man versus Invisible Stand was the end result of years of you know you kind of. <laughs> changing the role of a referee ever so slightly uh, you know in small doses and stuff you know there, there there's I a, should done this. I should there's done all this. sorts of it i, sh- I should have done this show a long time ago you guys are you're making me feel great this is very kind <laughs> I mean, it's, it's, it's it's all valid praise you know uh, uh well, there I, were invisible grenades and right and stuff what, like that. one of the reasons i love orange cassie so much is because i don't uh often get to flex my comedy muscles at AEW and I am worried they're going to go dormant, but then I get to referee an orange Cassie match and I get, Oh no, it's like, you know, like it's still there. It's still there. Like this is, this is kind of like the past bridging the future of my life and my brain is, is him in a nutshell, which is yeah you know, weird, weird thing to say, but it's true. I mean, you, you are as, as, as well as the brotherhood of the stripes. You're also part of the brick wall brotherhood with us. Oh. Um, <laughs> the comedy community. Uh, well, tell me a little bit about like your roots, your roots in comedy. You know, like that's how uh, I I came to meet you. Yeah, that's true. That's true. We were talking about Connie's Rick Rack and the Italian market of South Philadelphia and the 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 battling amazing the fabulous Gethard brothers before we started. Uh, when, when <laughs> uh, uh, I was in a sketch comedy troupe from I guess 2004 to 2019 called Secret Pants in Philadelphia. Uh, we were fortunate enough to have really good um, uh, editing video equipment early on. And right when YouTube started in 2006, we kind of caught on. And we had, you know, 2007, 8, 9, early, like, we need digital content people paying us lots of money to make funny videos, which, <laughs> which were their ideas, but we were bringing them to life, which, you know, <laughs> to a 23 year old felt like selling out, but also was a great idea at the time. So we did, uh, we, we are, our biggest footprint was probably live sketches on YouTube and Vimeo and stuff, but we did live shows up until two years ago. And they were my like, in, in college, instead of like going to frat parties, I was traveling to Indiana to referee for Terry Funk and and making sketch comedy videos. And, you know, my dad was getting the ATT wireless bill and be like, why were you in Indiana? On, <laughs> why, why, why were you in Wisconsin on a Thursday? And I was like, I don't know what you're talking about. Uh, I was like, we're not going to pay for your phone anymore. I was like, okay, well, that, that'll, that'll be what it'll be. I, I missed a college final once because I got caught in a snowstorm driving home from Chicago because Ian Rotten, who is a notorious indie wrestling promoter, was like, mm-hmm. Terry Funk's coming to town. I need you to be in the ring, kid. I need you to be the fifth man in the <laughs> ring. So I had to go referee for Terry Funk. I caught in a snowstorm and missed a college final on the way home. And uh, on the side side of that, I was making funny videos. Like when I graduated from college, instead of getting a job, I just went to wrestling shows and made funny videos with my friends for more years than I probably should have. Uh, but, you know, it is what it is. So I, I am not currently active in the comedy world just due to being older and growing up. And the pandemic surely didn't uh, help at all. But uh, it is a... Yeah, Right, right. Th- those are like my... Uh, those are my college friends or my sketch comedy friends. Like I didn't, I didn't, I didn't really make friends with my roommates or anybody I went to class with. Like the guys I formed a sketch comedy troupe with are my, are my college friends who, you know, I still talk to and we're in each other's weddings and all that good stuff. I, I, you know, we, we, we have these obsessions on wrestling. Yes. Club. Lanny Poffo was one of them. <laughs> Judy Martin's another. Uh, Lenny Poffo, that... man. Let, Lenny Poffo, I did the worst. Sorry to cut you off. He came to Legends no, no, no. Night at in Memphis at AEW, and I felt like the biggest chode because everybody wants. To, I feel like everybody goes to Lenny Poffo and is like, you know, 
you're the Macho Man's brother. And I was, and I think, and this is up for the, 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 you know, the, the Midnight Society of the Wrestling Club, but I think Randy Savage is the greatest of all time. Uh, he's a very confident baby face. He's, he's a main event baby face. He's a main event heel. He's a main event promo. He's a main event worker. Uh, he makes you believe. And that's what wrestling is. Like wrestling is making you believe. And he made whatever he was doing, he made you believe it. So in my opinion, I've thought about this and I felt have this belief for years. Randy Savage is the greatest of all time. And when his brother came to AW, I like couldn't not it's like you meeting Andy Kaufman's brother. Like I could <laughs> not address <laughs> I could not address. There's the award. Bring it up. Show the show the people. There you go. Okay, got to get that award in. No one's go one ever going to take it from me. No one's <laughs> ever going to take it from me. So there were in Memphis, Tennessee. Six oh. years running. Seven years so, running. Uh, Sorry. Another another di- another digression. I ap- I apologize. Uh, I obviously will never meet Andy Kaufman, but I am very proud that I have done all I can, except for. So I have. Referee to match with Jerry Lawler in it. I have gotten my picture taken with Jerry Lawler wearing my Andy Kaufman shirt that it was a direct ripoff and homage to him. Uh, I have refereed a match in which Jimmy Hart was managing. And then I was in the basement of Jerry Lawler's, he has like a barbecue place in Memphis. Mm. And a bunch of us got invited to come there when AEW went to Memphis. And it was me, Tony Khan, me and Tony Khan were just bothering Jerry Lawler with Andy Kaufman questions. Everybody else is like, guys, shut up. We want to go. We want to do this other thing. <laughs> and just us asking him questions about Andy Kaufman. And he, you know, the, the old wrestlers' favorite topics are themselves. You know, like that's how you get them talking. Uh, so Jerry Lawler was telling us about this and this and this about the ambulance. I was just in heaven. And I realized, like, I have, I have closed the Andy Kaufman gap. I'm never going to get, he's dead. I'm never going to meet him. But like, I've done everything I have. Like I've I've st- stood in Jerry Lawler's restaurant and told and talked about he was telling me personal off the record Andy Kaufman stories in Memphis like this is it we're done here I'm done here uh, sorry oh. what, 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 what oh, oh oh Lenny Poffo I couldn't I couldn't help but be the I loved your work as the genius you know I loved all your poems but you 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 must know that I am wearing a Macho Man shirt and I think you're the, I think your brother's the greatest of all time and we took a picture he's a very nice man he's a very nice. Man. I feel like he lo- I mean I feel like he loves talking macho man though. So I th- I don't think I, it's does. a big deal. He's happy he with it. He, he didn't seem offended by it. He, but he was a very very nice man. And, he, and you he know talking a little about... confused why he was there. Uh, and, and, and oh, sorry. I I thought of this too late, but we were in Andy Kaufman's restaurant and I said to Tony Khan, my boss, who is the biggest wrestling fan you'll ever meet, who also happens to be a billionaire. And I was like, "You know what we should have <laughs> got for Memphis Wrestling Legends Night was Bob Zamuda." And he was like, "Oh, that's a great idea." And Jerry Lawler was like, "Oh, that's a great idea," but it was too late. It was, it was, it was, it was, it was the night before the show. Like, it was not possible. Yeah, but I was that, like, I bring Tony that's... Clifton in, uh, right? <laughs> but, 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 but the fact, but the fact that Tony Khan would be like, "Oh, that's a great idea. We should have done that." It was just that was enough for me. That was enough for me. When you're in LA, I can't you wait. Know, when we're I back on the wait. road. Bring him I'll, backstage. I'll, I have a lot of questions for him. Too. I have a lot of questions for him too. Bring it on. Bring it on. Sorry, I want on to I, I want on a tangent. Lenny no, Poffo no, is the no. greatest of all. Who, who, are, who are your favorites? Oh, yeah. Well, you know, just the Wrestling Club Hall of Fame, which is not official. That'll probably be a future episode. But we got Lenny yeah. Poffo. We got you. You're going to need another award. You're going to need another diamond. You're going to have to send these out to. We got a Lulu Pencil. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, Death, uh, Death Yamasan or Go Keegan Death. Okay. Um, and then uh, Maki Ito. As Ooh, well, good, 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 good. Baki Ito coming to AEW from all you know, from my perspective, seemed like the coolest foreign exchange student came <laughs> into school. And <laughs> to everyone was Nobody so excited. You posted a picture on your Instagram, she's like awestruck, like I, just she just like I was so excited to meet her, and and mm-hmm. she uh, um, we had a uh, socially distanced masked hangout in uh, between one of our off days and we had her playing VR and just <laughs> watching her like 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 you know we were, we were bringing her American snacks and they took her to an arcade and you know drinking white claws and I was like, I was like this is the greatest thing this is the greatest thing ever like she's just the, because her first day um, a, uh, uh, AW has 
Michael Nakazawa, who is kind of also the the foreign emissary, like he kind of like, you know, translates and helps. And she's like, you know, uh, Maki has no, she has nowhere, nothing to do. It's like, oh, we'll, we'll, we'll get her to hang out. So we, we took her out to dinner. She went to an arcade with some friends and she came back to the hotel room and we ate uh, uh, um, Bucky's beef jerky and played VR with her. And it was <laughs> one of the, one of the greatest hangs I've had in a long time. I'm not going to lie to you guys. Our you, you is actually there. It. Not, not, to, not to full circle it, but Arm Cassie was in the room. Wow. No, no, I, I'm obsessed with this this hang. But I, I do need to point out, if you check, you could check this out on Wrestling Club WFMU oh, okay. on Instagram. But you, you did create something of a monster. Uh, uh -huh. This is a clip we found. I want it to drink Mountain Dew. My Mountain Dew. <laughs> ah, my Mountain Dew. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> She's addicted. She really wanted a poor do. woman. So, what, so what's up with that? Why can't you guys Who will get marry this? her? Who will marry her and get her a visa? Well, please. I, I'll that. volunteer in a second. Visas sure and international travel are very difficult to achieve right now. Someone <sighs> must marry her. I will. I, you think, I, you think, to, I'm, I'm you think Tony Khan's You think Tony Khan's, Tony Khan's got a billion dollars. Let's go. Let's, Let's go. figure it out. Let's get him on. Get him on. Tony, if you're listening, call the hotline. you're. You're, you're, you're dismissing the this marriage I, idea. I think, I, think, I think Tony's a little busy night with the NFL draft, uh, but I'm sure one of my coworkers will happily marry Maki Ito for the art. For the art. <laughs> what if the wrestling club host will happily marry? Dar happily, Darren's a little taken. Happily. I'm, yeah. yeah. I'll, I'll, be ready. Next, I'll just be, I'll just, I'll is, just sit outside Daly's place. What is it like? <laughs> Wait, the what car. Is it like? <laughs> uh, she is a delight. Yeah. I, so, you know, we're talking about Tony Khan, um, <laughs> Adam Susan in the chat saying, Maki Ito for The Bachelorette. Yeah, absolutely. Sure. I absolutely. Love, uh, let's, let's, let's get that on the AEW YouTube show. Like that, 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 that's, there's, 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 there's money in that, 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 that banana stand. Am I right? Like, let's go. Yeah. Like, I know AEW doesn't hire writers, but, <laughs> you know, we got a million of these ideas. Uh, but let's say you get the book. Tony says, Bryce, as a thank you, as a token of appreciation, we'll let you make <laughs> Here's all one... this work you have to do. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, we'll let you make one resounding change to AEW, you know. And don't give me the corporate answer like everything's hunky-dory. I'm sure it, you're, you're very satisfied with it. But what would be the one major change you would make to the company? Oh, man. Uh is Orange Cassidy world champion to on the nose? No. <laughs> uh, Not I'll, at all. I, I think that there are a lot of... Um, uh, I think we've only scratched the surface of... But I think there's a, there's a generation of people that are much younger than me that we've only scratched the surface of what they can bring to the table. Um, Ricky Starks, Darby Allen, Jungle Boy, MJF. And like these are already in many ways main event players, but um, as someone who's been around wrestling for almost 20 years, which is hard for me to say, uh, but it's true, I have been in the ring with these people. I've been in, listen to them, put things, ideas, and matches together, and like there are um, untold uh, there 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 are untold returns for what they bring to the table. I think that a it it is great that we have the the base that we have and 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 we need people like Jim Ross and Chris Jericho to get eyes on this thing and they're going to be a part of it for a long time. But imagining an AEW in five or ten or fifteen years that are when you have MJF and Darby and Ricky Starks, and Jungle Boy, and um, there's more names I'm omitting right now, but of that generation of 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 people um still steering the ship like it makes me feel that we're going to be in good hands and i i i'm i'm excited for me and the world to see what more colors they can paint given broader canvases if that makes sense mm -hmm. that's the Absolutely. thing with aew i feel yeah. like since aew has come out i'm uh, optimistic about the future of wrestling where in the past you know i always had my favorites on the indies or whatever but the future was always this very dicey possible dead end, you know, right. and now there's like, 
now there, the future is like it can be creative it can be something right. new you know like, like we, we talk about these crazy matches that you can make in aew that have never happened yet like like darby versus kenny like like that's crazy wow. yeah. right i just right? literally just got a little goosebumps right like, right like like that that uh, might happen next year it might happen in three years it might happen in five years but when it happens it's gonna be awesome right um mm -hmm. you know um hangman versus orange cassidy you know, right. like there, 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 all there are so many main event players. There's so many combos you can make. Like it's like a Rubik's cube, and like we've only turned the Rubik's cube so many times, and there's so many more ways we can turn it, and more things we can make. Um, and another guy we talked about it briefly before, he's not in this younger generation, but like you put in like guys like Pac and Phoenix in this mix that can have a good match with a wall or a door, oh like. God. Right, right, right. So like there there's just so many fun possibilities and combinations that we haven't even tried to figure out yet. I mean so even I, just I, even, I, I have no worry about the future. Even last night, like Penta and Orange Cassidy tore it up. And like that was that's their first match time. That's the first time they ever wrestled in a singles match. And that's not like a match on paper that like kind of sounds bizarre, but they gelled really well. And you know, it's that's what's fun about AEW is that it's it harkens back to the Nitro era where you're not really sure who's going to show. I mean, Yuji Nagata is going to be on AEW in two weeks. That's amazing. Right. Right. That's yeah, so right. cool. Speaking of which, Mox is, Moxley's the man. I just want to, I'm not saying, telling you anything you don't know, but like John Moxley's the coolest dude in the world. Oh, uh, yeah. One, one, one of the highest compliments I've ever gotten in my life. And um, it was uh, last September. I did the main event of All Out, and it was the first time I'd ever main event. I'd ever I'd ever been the referee for the main event of a pay per view, and it was like personally a big night for me. And it was Moxley versus MJF, and everything went well, and it was you know it was it was a good night. And I was leaving the after party, like there's like a room at the hotel where there's drinks and food, and you know it's bubble safe, but everyone's kind of there together, unwinding and commiserating and what have you. And I was leaving the after party as. Uh, John and Renee were arriving to the after party. And John was like, oh, thanks for that, blah, blah, blah. And then we, we kept walking. I was on my way to my hotel room and I overheard John Moxley say to Renee Young, uh, that's Bryce. He used to refer for CCW. He's cool. And I was like, Whoa. We're, we're done here, lads. I'm going. Yo, to dude, like, this dude, you're it. cool. That's it. That's like John Moxley just told Renee Young, I'm cool because I used to referee in CCW. We Whoa. are done here. Uh, yeah. And that was, you know, one of the one of the coolest, uh, the, the, a great cherry on top of a beautiful Sunday night of my life. Uh, that's right. so nice. Yeah, but, I, yeah I mean, Moxley, you Moxley versus Nagata. That's like it's so like, so great. What 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 if 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 professional wrestling was was magnetic poetry on a refrigerator with all little words and everything like. You don't make Moxley versus Nagata on TNT in 2021. <laughs> it's like, amazing. It, the brain doesn't come up with that. But here we are, May 12th. It's going to happen. You know? And Nagata, like, he can still go. Like, he's goddamn like, right he can. He's goddamn right, right he can. Like, any night of the week, he can be the best guy on the card, you know? He's, he's great. So I'm really, you know, as the door, this forbidden door, which I guess is the largest door in the world because it opens very slowly. Yeah. Or, or theory, there's a doggy path at the bottom. There's like, uh -huh. like <laughs> just cats and you, yes, yeah, hey, where am I? Yeah, come on, come on. <laughs> it's still forbidden, but it's a little quicker. It's, it's, yeah, it's yeah, 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 right, right. But also, Aubrey Edwards, uh, at uh, you know, eight or sorry, impact, uh, just this weekend, yeah, you know, yeah, like, right, right, was, refereeing this like title match with Brian Hebner. It's like, the forbidden door includes you guys. Uh, there, there, there's it's, things it's, you could. There, there's a lot of things like, well, that'll never happen. And then you you stop, and someone who's often Tony Khan says, "Well, why not? Why mm. why won't it happen? Why can't we do that?" And well, I guess we could, you know. And then dot dot dot. Here we are. Um, like that is a lot of uh, like I think a lot of that comes from Kenny. Not a lot of it, but. Some of it definitely, like Kenny Omega's eyes and brain see professional wrestling in a way that no one else in the entire world does. Like I want to do an exploding ring barbed wire match on pay per view. What? No one will watch that. Who wants that? That's crazy. It was our best selling pay per view of all time. Of course, yeah. It it it, it may not have ended. Everybody dreamt it would end. It. Okay, but like an idea that internally was like what. 
and externally was like, what was the best-selling paper of all time? And he had a vision. He fought for it. He drove the point home. And lo and behold, cut, you know, clock wipe two, I'm in a bomb suit wearing a shield on pay-per-view holding oh up God. the whole thing. <laughs> like, how did, did you we keep get the here? suit? I do have the I have the suit. Um, Good. So the 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 idea is to save it and auction it for charity one day. Uh, the suit we cannot auction because there's blood on it. <laughs> uh, but the, <laughs> the shield is uh, blood free and will be autographed by Mox and Kenny and will one day you know go to a good home and raise some good people some good money. But I do, I, it is, it is in a safe place. Yeah. Is that the, is that the scariest match you've ever refereed? Um, I, no, because I had like experience and wisdom, I guess. Like I believe that the people that put together and oversaw this exploding ring death match were professionals uh there was a doctor on site there was a real production crew that tested made everything <laughs> happen when i was in the cage of death for cw in 2005 okay. i did not i did not have that yeah. same <laughs> and, i and, wasn't and, gonna answer for you but i was gonna say <laughs> i was i was younger and a little more carefree but 38 year old brain in 2005 would have been like this is a bad idea guys like someone get hurt and if someone gets hurt the course of action that happens after that might make it worse and not better. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but AEW, you know, there were tests done. Everything was was walked through and pre-approved, and the doctors in all the meetings. And th- you know, there were, there were levels and levels of this, so nothing would go wrong. Uh, and if you notice, like the fourth side of the ring had no barbed wire on it, which right. was kind of a concession in case of emergency. I could get in, I can get out. They can get in, they can get out. The doctor can get in, the doctor can get whatever it was. That was a sort of safety compromise, which you didn't see. In 1995 at Kawasaki Stadium with Cactus Jack and Jerry Funk. <laughs> no, not so much. But, but they might not have had all those levels of of safety. So that that was that was kind of a compromise that everyone made that this could be done safely but effectively and as a spectacle. And even though, come what may, as the night ended, it was definitely a spectacle. Like you can't argue that. Yeah, was, was there a great satisfaction match. backstage, like afterwards, or was um, there like um, confusion? Unfortunately in wrestling, you, you know, and in a, a performance of any way, sometimes you're only as good as your last hit or your last joke or the, the, the button that you end an improv set on that you fade to black on. So while 29 minutes and 59 seconds of that was, you know, a home run, maybe because the last second was, it was the feeling and the vibe was different than it could have or would have or should have been, unfortunately. Uh, but you know, it is what it is. You can't you can't undo it, and you can't take back what it was. And the company has not folded and floundered and given up since then. So it seems and, like we're, it seems like we're going to be okay. And I don't think it's going to hurt. I mean, you know, next week is blood and guts. You know, the next yeah. big spectacle match. And I don't think anyone is like, well, you saw what they did last time. No, you know, everybody's so right. excited for it. The yeah. first week we were on the post by NXT, we did our second biggest number ever ratings wise. You know, right. um, as uh, uh, live attendance is kind of a wash right now, but there's there you, you can feel the volcano bubbling. Like th- things are on the uptick, and I think there's a lot of exciting things ahead. And hopefully, being able to safely get back on the roads, Jacksonville's great. We're very lucky to have an outdoor amphitheater that we can have fans at. Uh, but I think by the time it becomes summer and fall and we can hopefully safely get back on the road and go see, you know, go to Jersey city, go to Los Angeles and see smiling faces without masks on it. People a little close to the ring. Like that energy is contagious. You guys. I won't that. be and, smiling. I'll be judging. <laughs> arms, arms I'll be like Dave, just like, yeah. like take <laughs> <a little laughs> no pad out, take five and a quarter stars. Sorry, Kenny. <laughs> I got, I got, I got to ask, uh, you know, obviously the circumstances very sad, but the result uh, has been so nice to see. What is it like uh, having negative one around backstage? Uh, he's a, uh, he like, <laughs> it's uh, so much of like a ball buster and stuff like his dad. Uh, <laughs> uh, he was waiting to go. This is, this is like a month ago. I will not say who, but someone was coming back for their match and negative one was waiting because his match was next and they're waiting in the hallway and negative one goes, Bro, that was sloppy. This is like a nine-year-old kid talking to a a, a decades-long professional. Like, and he said it like you couldn't tell if he was being serious or not. He just has this like dry wit, just like his dad. And um, you know, 
it's an awful, awful, terrible, unthinkable situation. But if you're that kid and you love wrestling more than anything in the world, like this feels like the, for him, like if we are in charge of the blender and we are in charge of the juice bar, this is the best lemonade we can make this kid who has just been served the giantest pile of lemons ever in his life. So like, if this makes him happy, and it does, and it makes us happy seeing him happy, like, it, it's not just therapeutic for him, and it's not just therapeutic for his mom and his brother, you know, like, it is, it is the, the, the best possible unfortunate chicken salad we could make, I think, out of the chicken shit we all, unfortunately, terribly experienced. I don't, I, you know, I, I don't mean to sound insensitive, but it all no, sucks. It's, it's and, so and, and, nice and it's, to see. Yeah, yeah. I, I think I think his his happiness is not just contagious for him and his family and his friends and us, but people watching at home too. So if, yeah. this, is, if, if this is what we can do with this, that's what sure. I did. I had to tell him to calm down a few weeks ago. He was being a little too rambunctious on the ramp. Like, <laughs> right, just, just uh, you're, you're at eleven. I need you at like nine and a half, Brody. And he was just like, okay, I, I get, I get, I get it, bro. I mean, that's the coolest thing to, like, see him get more comfortable on, on camera and, like, just really, like, it's like watching a performer develop, really. Yep. And He's got uh, natural charisma. He does. He does. He, yeah. he, he like, he, he understands what he's doing. He knows where the cameras are. Like, he knows exactly what he's doing. He's watched wrestling literally his whole life. Uh, mm -hmm. And he, like, like, I was a wrestling fan when I was nine. I don't know about you guys. He just turned nine. I was If too, when yeah. you were nine, you got to do this, that's it. That's everything. <laughs> yeah. Like that's it. Peak, I'm done. Peak would maybe be like dancing with the Godwins in the way in the ring. <laughs> like, like that's maybe the, the best. The Bushwhackers licked me. I'm done here. Like this is yeah. it. For me. So like his mom uses that as like you know inspiration to get you know if you if you get your schoolwork done we can go to AEW next week you know like oh he straight A's magic straight A's um, and he is. Yeah, he's a natural performer. He's amazing. He's just like you can like call spots. I mean, is exactly what you're under what you're saying. We like actually um, a few weeks ago we're showing him some of his dad's Chikara matches, and like the thing he was most blown away by is that he was two months old. We were watching a match from 2012. He wrestled Eddie Kingston for the Chikara Grand Championship in Ottawa, Canada. It's a great match, but. He, it wasn't that it was like, you know, his dad and these other people that he's he's known. It was that he's like, I was two months old when this happened. Like that he couldn't wrap his brain around. Um, that I guess a, a lot of what his dad's career he knew was in WWE. And then at the end at AEW, uh, because that was his life. So to see that his dad had many, many years of a wrestling career, I guess, I don't know, eight, 10, before he was even born, like, just watching his little nine-year-old brain like <laughs> was really, really cool to watch. Uh, but yeah, it's cool. He's he's part of the family. I told him I was like, I I can't quit. Uh, I can't give up refereeing till I can referee one of your matches. And he's like, all right, it's a deal. So I'm I'm in it till at least till he's at least eighteen. I can't wait. It's gonna be the best story ever told in wrestling. It could be I, if he wants it. Could it be. You know. Yeah. Yeah. You know. Yeah. I I I wouldn't put anything past him. <laughs> I, I I totally believe. It. Bryce, as we wrap up this chat, yeah, sorry uh, to bring it down, guys. Sorry to make it sad. No, it's not sad. It's that's the yeah, nicest right. thing wrestling's that. ever that. done. Yeah, <laughs> right. literally, it's, it's, it's right. truly is. That, that tribute no. show made me cry more than any. Yeah, you know, that was the match that was, I've ever seen. When you think about when you think back to 2020 in wrestling, which has been a very difficult year to be a wrestling fan in a lot of ways. You know, that's definitely the emotional climax. I mean, it was just such a, yeah. a beautiful tribute you guys did. So it was therapy. It was therapy for yeah. everyone. For uh, everyone. Uh, Fans, us, them, viewers, you, yep, wrestlers. Yep. Yeah. Absolutely. absolutely. Like we we, you know, uh Brody died on a Saturday night and on Tuesday we all flew to Jacksonville and it's like this is hard, but like thank God we get all get, all get to be together. Somehow, some way during a global right. pandemic, we all get to be in the same place to go through this experience at the same time. Like a, another, I don't know if you guys know, there's a guy called Sweet and Sour Larry Sweeney who was like our favorite. Eating. So he passed away on a Monday, and then on that Friday night, the we had a Chikara event, and we were all together. And it's like, man, this is awful. This is sad. But like us being together and being able to 
cry together and hug together and all the like like this is this is the best medicine for us right now and the right. same thing happened with Brody like I'm so glad we got to have a TV show three days after he died and and pay respects to him and everything like and and as we were all saying that night and as we were saying to little Brody like this is forever this is this is you know the worst hopefully the worst thing he ever has to endure in his entire life but yeah. this thing that we all made together with love for the whole world is now forever you know what i mean like it's right not in the just, pantheon it's, yeah. yes it's it's a two-hour television show that we all like i don't want to watch it just yet i'm not quite ready to watch it back just yet because i lived it but one day i'll go watch it back with my kid and i'll tell them the story you know like that's forever and the fact that he has that and we have that is an incalculable um memento and thing to have i guess i don't know we're weird to say but yeah sure. No, we, we, we lost a, a friend, a, a close collaborator, Mr. Joe Steve Whalen. And, uh, you know, it thankfully happened right before the pandemic because yeah. it was so therapeutic. Oh my God. Yeah. Once, once that weekend was over, I was like, oh, wow, I do actually feel like better than if I just didn't get to do any of this. So, right. you know, yeah. I'm sure every week is that for him. And, yep. Yep. you know, yeah, yeah, for sure, for sure. Well, to do a <laughs> best referees, top, top, top five. <laughs> oh, man. For me? Yeah. Darren, uh, you could throw in your two cents, too. Yes. I don't have. I'm a big, I'm a big Charles Robinson guy. But there's a guy by the name of Mark Curtis, who is like a Smoky Mountain. Oh, rapper. yeah. Yeah. He did all the Cruiserweight matches on Nitro. A little mm-hmm. bit of my, um, you know, uh, drama he... and flair comes from him. Didn't he portray uh, one of the t- t- Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles yeah, with uh, the Toxic Turtles? Yes, that's right. That's very, yeah. The suspenders guy with the mullet. Yep. Yeah, yep, yeah, yeah. Sure. Mark Just, uh, Brian Hildenbrand. A, 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 Brian yep, Hildenbrand. Yep. yep. A smaller guy that realized actually wrestling would not be his full time thing and just found a way to be involved and stay involved. I have a lot of respect for that. I think Tommy Young from the NWA is awesome. Like he brought an air of seriousness. Like when Flair would push him and he'd push Flair back and Flair would bump him back off. It's like, you just made the role. Like Ric Flair just made the role of the referee important. Like if he's powdering off from this guy who's a referee, like everyone should respect referees. Like, and he was the right guy for the right job in the right time. This is, I'm probably preaching to the choir and this is a very modern thing, but like, I think Aubrey's awesome. I, you know, I see oh, the yeah. tweets she gets from, from young girls and moms and sisters. And it's like, you are a role of authority in a ma- professional wrestling has been a male dominated industry for as long as it's been around. And there are dozens and hundreds of super talented women's wrestlers, but there's never been a full, uh, you know, such a prominently featured female authority figure. And like Chris Jericho backs off from her. That makes her legit. When, you know, when, when she yells at him and he powders away, like, wow, Chris Jericho's wrestling for 30 years is respecting her authority. We all should respect her authority. And she's really good at what she does. And I think she has inspired WWE to take the concept of female referees a little more seriously, which is obviously long overdue for all major companies. But if she did that for them and she's doing that for other people and she's like, I guarantee you're going to find someone when the pandemic Ash is clear. Someone's going to go to a referee school, go to a wrestling school and say they want to be a referee, a female, because Aubrey inspired them. I guarantee that's going to happen. Like yeah. Bailey and Sasha Banks inspired a new generation of women's wrestlers six or five or six years ago from their amazing match in Brooklyn that we are just now seeing rise to independence. Like in two or three or four years, there are going to be women on independent shows that were inspired from Aubrey. And that's just the way it is. Uh, and I, I'm proud to call her a coworker and a friend, but that's, is that five? What do you got, Darren? I'm sorry. That was five. Oh okay. God. Who was I going to throw in there? Oh God. Red shoes. Got to throw. Red oh shoes yeah, in absolutely. Love red red shoes. Just like but talk what, about like. His, when, the, when, his... the, when the pandemic does settle, like, we got to get him over here. We got to go oh over there. God. Like I would love to have a co-op with him. I feel like his instincts as a physical performer are just, he's, he's wild. Uh, Tommy Young was going to be on my list too. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I, that's that's probably. I mean, you know, maybe I, I'll, I like maybe I'll... dangerous Danny Davis. <laughs> <laughs> I like Nick Patrick. Bad guy, bad guy. 
Uh, I was I like, at Stargate like 97. The, I like when Harvey Whippleman did it for like a month. Oh, the, the scabs when they walked like out. <laughs> when, uh, when, when Nick Patrick was supposed to fast count Hogan at Stargate 97, he didn't really confuse oh, everyone. I was there with my dad who already didn't want to be there. So he was extra confused at the end of that. It's like, what's going on? So oh, in, in, wow. in another weird full circle life moment, I the first time I was in that same building in D.C. And I like went and sat in the seats my dad and I were in the very top row. And I was like, I'm going to be in the ring tonight, you know. And then now I uh, my other job with A.W. is as a travel manager. So I help with hotels and flights and everything. So I have the very distinct pleasure of talking to Sting on the phone once a week. And he is just a perfect That's gentleman. Cool. I haven't yet told him. I'm, we're not quite at the point yet where. I told him that I I was at Starcade you know, like I don't want to be like the Chris Farley show guy. And I was at Starcade ninety seven when you were still talking. Uh, but yeah, like may I, may it I all keeps coming full one, circle. Well, one simple of request. Of course. There's that Luke Gallo story where Howard Finkel calls him. <laughs> And at the end of uh, the conversation, he's like, and you'll be staying here and you'll be staying here and you'll be wrestling Kane. (laughs) At the end of the call, he said, and one more thing there and you can do it. Watch out for the choke slam. (laughs) (laughs) That's a really good, that's a really good Howard Finkel. Uh, You know, I've been working on it since I was five years old. Uh, Uh, Cody will come in and throw that in. in. Okay. Okay. You can throw that into somebody. I don't know. <laughs> you will be staying at the Holiday Inn in Jacksonville. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All well, right. Bryce, Good. thank you so much for being a guest. Uh, Thanks for having me, gentlemen. Again, universally beloved. Uh, oh, you know, it's very kind. I could easily talk to you for another two hours. Hopefully, but. we can see, we can have real face conversations, even better without masks in the greater Jersey City or Los Angeles area as one future. Well, hey, we'll keep hoping. Hell yeah. All right, all right. Newark in September. Uh, Newark's on the calendar for September. Oh my god, I can't wait. I've been waiting. I I was about to buy tickets for Blood and Guts at the Prudential Center Uh, one week from the date it was supposed to be, and then uh, something happened, so I couldn't go. But uh, (laughs) stay tuned. Stay tuned. Stay tuned. We're not going anywhere. Stay tuned. I can't wait. I can't wait. Yeah. Thanks for having me, guys. Uh, Bryce, Bryce, you got any plugs? No, just like uh, you know, I think uh, well. Oh, what are you what, what, what pants videos you want to? Oh boy, there's one called there's one called Juggalo Sunday where I wear insane clown posse makeup that I am exceptionally proud and disappointed of at all the same time. Uh, I uh, I'm very uh, I think that what AEW is doing and is is great for wrestling, but I think that I would be remiss if I didn't say that after the last 14 months independent wrestling very much took a hit. And, you know, if there are ways that you can support your local independent wrestling, much like your local record store, your local bookstore, your local fast food joint, whatever it is, uh, you know, the band you like, uh, they need your support more than ever. And if that is, you know, buying a t-shirt that you never wear or buying a ticket that you don't use, if you have the means, now's the time to do that. Uh, Buying a stream for something, IWTV, independentwrestling.tv is a great resource. It's kind of a great catch-all for a lot of great independent wrestling uh, past, present, and future. And I think that um, while I have been very lucky to never never miss a paycheck or, you know, not have, be, be without work for a long period of time because of the pandemic, those that are, uh, you know, farther down on the pro wrestling pyramid have not been so lucky. So if you have that time and energy, uh, throw, a, throw a shekel their way if you can. No, I'll, I'll throw a specific name out there, Dropkick Depression, uh, mm-hmm. which is uh, sure. done by... Uh, uh, our friend Tara Calloway, wrestling yeah. club member, and Jeff Cannonball. Uh, you know they they've got a, a show coming up. They're they're raising money for it. Uh, I Great. think we're going to be. I'll, I'll save that for a future episode. But uh, yeah, uh, you know that's a great thing to support. If, if you are Pennsylvania New Jersey local, one of the finest independent. Um, they were an independent T-shirt printing place, which they still are. Uh, Lehigh Valley Apparel Creations, LVAC. Uh, they were doing shows at a Polish club in Bethlehem, Pennsylvania, that were among the most fun I've ever had in all of wrestling. Alf was there once. It was amazing. Uh, but <laughs> wait, the third week wait, of May, wait, wait, hold on, wait, hold on. Alf was there. It was around Halloween, and Alf showed up from Melbach. It was amazing. Uh, <laughs> And in the third week of May, May, I know I still have more questions. <laughs> <laughs> Was he have, sort of like I roasting? Have, I have you a see picture his lower somewhere. half. I have a picture somewhere. I'm gonna find it. 
but in the in May 21st and 22nd, they will be doing live events at a drive-in movie theater in Lehigh, in Pennsylvania, called the Mahoning Valley Drive-In. Oh, that's a, that's a WFU-related uh, yes. theater. Where, I guess Funk Davies is going to be there in like a couple weeks or something. I read about they, that. They do, they do like like uh, very nerdy, way down in the hole uh, movies. Last year, they showed Ready to Rumble and... Ooh. No holds barred, and I, this year they're showing Beyond the Mat, which the fact that Beyond the Mat is playing at a drive movie theater just like That's amazing. I all, have to go checking all my nerd boxes. Uh, but they're gonna do an hour of live pro wrestling in front of the big screen before the sun goes down on uh, May twenty first, twenty second. Yeah, and so. it's if you're if you're in that Outside area, socially distance, safe. Yeah, it's, it's amazing. The screen is like one of the largest movie screens in the world, I think. Yeah. And like you can be like so far away, you know, if you're living in Jersey and you're enjoying your legal weed, you yeah. know, it's not legal in Pennsylvania, but no you'll be so that. far away. It's but yeah, it's it's a it's a it's rock not, and roll not, drive. It's not theater. legal yet. Uh, one of our our lieutenant governors working on it. I promise you. It's, it's, we'll get it. So we'll go. Believe in Pennsylvania. Right. Yeah, but it's they all, the, the drive-in. Actually, there's a whole documentary about Amazon Prime. I think it's called At the Drive-in about like this. You know they were about to close and they just got this cult following and and during the pandemic so many things went to shit but their like business blew up because a drive-in movie is the thing yeah. you can do safely and yeah. what's old is new again and it's kind of in the middle of nowhere about half hour north of allentown it's drivable from new york and philly but yeah so it's possible i might show up there uh, the third weekend in may uh, we'll see we'll see and we should say it's all 35 millimeter films. Yep. yep. It's, it's they, not digital. So they're, they're like, very proud they're about really, how they, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So yeah. Mahoning drive in, check yep. it out. Yep. Check it out. It's great. It's awesome. And you could That's also good. check out uh, our past episodes. We just did a, a of recap of 1986, with Rob Naylor. Uh, uh, the, pride, the, the battling pride of Shemokin, in Pennsylvania. A great man. Rob Naylor. <laughs> I love We Rob. gushed, we gushed about you on our episode with Zia Hilti two weeks great ago. Night. Rob's a great man. Zia's a great woman. That's great. I'm in good company. Yeah. And then Darren, you got your WFMU show this week. That's right. We're gonna be on we're gonna be on the air three to six AM Saturday into Sunday night. So if you're in if you're an insomniac, if you got, you know, nightmares, you know, just uh turn on the radio and I'll uh, keep you company. Three to what's six AM. What's your song recommendation? I was gonna say, are, are, we, are we are we talking here, or is this just your? On, no, it's a music show. Hours? Okay, okay. okay. Uh, uh, yep, yeah, it's a music show. So you know, I mean, I talk a little bit, but usually I'm very tired. Uh, although okay. this week will be my first week on the air as not a part of WFMU Skeleton Crew. We're almost back in the studio, 100. percent So I get to sleep before my show, so I where, get to wake up the, and be where alive. Are the studios? Studios are in Jersey City, downtown okay, Jersey okay, City, okay, right okay. outside of Exchange Place. Uh, don't please don't go to the studio. No, I don't no, want to no. see any of you there. But uh, you know, maybe in a couple <laughs> of months we can invite you over. But uh, yeah, this week, uh, boy, I've got all I've got this all this um, this French uh, 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 post punk that I found. Uh, it's actually it's I'm really excited to play it because it's like the 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 vocals are just a, I'm an American woman. It's very strange. It kind of reminds me of like uh, like warm leather. I don't know if you know that song by the Normal. It's kind of got that vibe to it. But it's a uh, it's a real rarity. So you might want to check it out if you're a weird nerd like us. Yeah. Uh, my song recommendation was if you need to keep people up until the night. It, there's a there's a weird Al Yankovic. Uh, it's an Oingo Boingo pastiche called You Make Me from 1989. Oh yeah. It, it's, it's like a frenetic high energy song that. Uh, I'm not ashamed to admit hypes me up to this day. So sure. You, you, sure. Throw, you, you want to throw, you want to. Our friend Mikey Heller made a great Spotify playlist of uh, all the weird Al songs that are like, kind of just like new wave. <laughs> and it's just reimagining weird Al's just a straight ahead new wave artist. My, great. There. I, one, one of the things that my wife and I took up during pandemic is playing zoom quizzo with our neighbors who are not in our house, but are across the block and playing like, you know, th this bar used to us quiz in Lancaster, now they're doing it online. And when you finish third place, you get to pick a category for next week. And I picked Weird Al Originals. And I was, you know, very proud of myself and got everyone right. So that is that is my favorite Weird Al Original. So nice. if you're feeling it, if you're feeling oh, man, it. Man, I'm going to put it on the list. I'm putting it on my list right now. All right. I'm, I'm getting I'm it on there. I'm, 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 my, my mark has been left. That's great. Well, Bryce, thank you so much for this chat. Thanks for having me, Brett. I know Thanks, you got to get you got to get your rest. Uh, <laughs> you know, well, keep do, the peace down do in Jacksonville. Own. That's right. That's right. Well, blood and guts next Wednesday. It's gonna be. It's gonna be something.
it's going yeah. to be careful, careful in there. It gets a little. I've seen, I've seen clips. It gets wild in there. I'm, yeah. I, I'm hoping I'll be, I'm, I'm, I'm pulling for the one that just opens the door. <laughs> hey, <laughs> that's where Mike Tyson's going to be. Maybe I don't. Oh know. no, don't know no, careful, no, no. The the un the unforbidden door. I'll just be like, please, right now, please. Yeah. Here you are. It is your it's, it's your turn, Wardlow. Okay, okay. Yeah. Okay. Oh, if you're in there with Wardlow, watch out for that choke <laughs> slam. <laughs> <laughs> there and take us out. All right, that'll do it for Wrestling Club. Thanks for hanging out with us. Thanks to Bryce Remsburg. Shout-outs to the man upstairs, Isaiah, Steve D for the theme song, and the fine folks at WFMU Radio. If you dig Wrestling Club, please like, share, subscribe. Give us a five-star rating on the Meltzer scale. Invite your friends. Check out the archives. Spread the word. Wrestling Wrestling Club comes back next Thursday night at 9, live on YouTube, so please be there. And until then, for Brett, I'm Darren. We'll see you next week.